Ever wondered how to use microtones to spice up your jazz harmonies? Totally! I thought I was the only one thinking about that. Well, then let's dive right into it. The rabbit hole goes really deep on this one. Here between the lines. Welcome to another small series focusing on microtonal harmony. This time, each episode will contain an entirely separate topic. This is because the ideas we present in them are so dear to us that we feel they deserve their own unique presentation. Yes. Today, we'll be working in 24 tet, a system we haven't devoted that many videos to yet due to its similarities to 12 tet. Which is exactly why it's a perfect gateway leading us into the realm of microtones. Especially regarding contrary motion techniques. Before we start, however, we want to state that 24 tet also provides new possible intervals, of course approximating overtones like the 11th and 13th overtone very well, for example. While we are definitely aware of that, we'll just focus on the microtonal motion today and its power to connect 12 tet sounds in a totally different way. Shall we head into the studio and try to find out what kind of voice leading works best with quarter tones? Well, I thought we could play a little game instead. Okay, I love games. Um, ooh, let me guess, is it a puzzle? Well, not really, it's rather a board game which will help us map out our harmonic journey. Cool. But what's all of this? What's the easiest way to modulate with quadratones, you'd say? I can just play it on my lute for you. It's actually really simple. G shad and D shad move downwards by a quarter tone step, becoming G and D, and the B flarp moves up a quarter tone step, becoming B. The oldest trick in the here between the lines inventory. What makes it so special in 24 tet is that it requires all voices to move by exactly one quarter tone, either up or down. Taking a look at the map now, you easily spot a system. Yeah, the numbers seem to have a clear order to them somehow. Exactly. Replace the digits with semitones. 1 equals 1 semitone, 2 equals 2 semitones, a major second, etc. Okay, so the map shows me every triadic structure in its close position? Yes, two digits from a triad, just like two intervals do. Okay, I think I found the last two chords from my loop progression. A minor chord turning into a major chord. Yes, I mean, your voicings were more spread out, but that doesn't change the underlying structure. Okay, okay, but I can play minor and major chords in 12 tet. Is this map even microtonal? It is. If you take your minor chord, for example, uh, let's say in root position, you can make up a set of rules for how and where it's supposed to resolve. Okay. We said every voice has to move by quarter tones, right? So either up or down to resolve into well known 12 tet intervals. That makes eight ways to resolve a triad. Ah, there's my G chord from my piece. But if there are eight possible resolutions, how come there are only six on this map? Well, if all voices were to move in the same direction, you'd merely change the pitch quarter tonally, but not the chord type. Not a good move if you care about the voice leading. Gotcha. Removing these, we're left with six exciting ways to modulate. Yes, and they all share borders with your starting triad. Okay, crazy. So it's not actually about which pitch you land on, but rather which type of sound you'll arrive in? Yes. And I mean, when you're composing a piece, you could always abandon the rules and do whatever you like. But let's stick with them for today to find out more about possible movements, shall we? Sure. Okay, let's see who finds the coolest connections. Alright, it says that each of us gets some notes to start with. There you go. Awesome. I got A major. I think, yeah, I'll start in the second inversion. What do you got? Well, I got D and F. So far so good, right? 
but this is the shed. I can't build a familiar card with that. Hmm. How about you get to start then? Draw a card. Nice. I got a flop. Quick reminder, flops will lower your pitches in 24 tet by a quarter tone, and shats raise them by a quarter tone. Okay, so now I can turn my D shed into a D using this flop accidental. This way, all of my notes are in the same set of 12 note harmony. But now you don't have a triad anymore. True, it's only a minor third, but look, the sides of the map, they are diets. So I could start here or there. All right. Nice, I got a shat. So let me just turn my E into an E shat like this. All right. I got another flop, but I think I know what I could do. <laughs> Everything is going according to plan. Finally, my first shed. Only one more to go. Not so fast. I got a steel card. So let me just take that flop and voila, I successfully modulated from A major to D flop minor. You really seem to like going from major to minor, don't you? Okay, where we at? Well, I intend to close this ring called Coltrane's Worst Nightmare. What? You'll get to hear it in a minute, but what are you up to? Well, I managed to create this thing called Uplifting Lament and want to top that up with a spiral modulation. Cool. My turn it is. Great, another shot. Sweet, D flop. That's exactly one quarter tone higher than C sharp. Flop, I just need one more. Well, that makes us even. I got flop as well. Oh, let me steal that, come on. No need, I got a flop myself. And I'm done. I'm back where I started, at A major. Congrats. Can I have one last shot? Okay. Yes. Shed. I managed to finish my modulation as well. Nice. So let's hear how that sounds. Well, I had two ideas, which I combined. You've probably heard of the Lamento bass. Normally it's a chromatically descending bass line. In this case, however, my bass line moves down by quarter tones instead of semitones. Sounds super sad to me. Now, since all the voices have to move, I slowly pushed the minor third I started with upwards, every time the bass note descended by a quarter tone. An uplifting lament, you could say. Okay, now I don't know whether I'm sad or happy. Wait for it. Lastly, I wanted to change this chord into the same, only a quarter tone higher. All I needed to do was move in the same triangle shape away and back to my selected triad. Crazy. Well done. Does this triangle trick work with every chord on the map? Yes. And the direction you move in decides whether your chord will rise or sink in pitch. But what about your progression? All right, all right. You'll soon get why it's called Coltrane's Worst Nightmare. But first, Let's take a closer look at my chord types. Okay, I think I know what you mean. They are all either minor or major trides. Exactly. And since you can create three inversions of both, each one is represented here. Always in the order major, minor, major, minor, etc. They form a ring around the augmented structure. That's fun, but I still don't get the Coltrane connection. Well, the special thing is their relationship to each other. My major chords are A, F and D flat. Ah, those are some huge, one could say, giant steps. There you go. The roots of the minor triads have the same augmented relationships, just a quarter tone higher. Well, I'd like to hear a solo on those changes. Me too. Maybe someone will dare to one day.
Thanks for watching this new episode. If you like what we do here, check out our other videos on our channel. And if you want to play this game and learn more about quartotonal harmony, hit us up. Should there be enough demand, we could certainly make some more of these. In the next episode, we'll dive into advanced harmonization techniques in 3110, so definitely stay tuned.